My name is Kylie Bullington, and this is an overview of my time in Education 121, Child and Adolescent Development. This is a presentation that I did with one of my classmates about the theorist Albert Bandura. His theory is the social cognitive theory. When doing this project, I learned that he has four steps within his theory, attention, retention, reproduction, and motivation. Attention is how a person focuses on the behavior of someone else. Retention is how they remember what was modeled. We decided to do our own experiment using his four steps. I brought in a cotton candy machine and had everyone in the class model my behavior using cotton candy as a motivation. Another thing that I did while in this class was the final paper. My paper covered major course learning objective nine which is identify and explore ways to support all children and adolescents in their personal growth and development related to trust, autonomy, initiative, industry, and identity. Those five stages of development are from Eric Erickson's psychoanalytic theory. When doing this paper, I learned ways how to help each child dur develop during every stage. During trust versus mistrust, it is important that parents and caregivers provide basic resources for their child. In this stage of autonomy versus shame, parents and caregivers need to let their child explore new things in, on their own so they can become more independent. During the preschool years, which is known as initiative versus guilt, it is important that teachers answer all the qu why questions that the children ask. When children officially hit school age, which is considered the stage of industry versus inferiority. It is important that teachers praise them for all of their accomplishments and the skills that they have earned. And finally, during the stage of identity versus role confusion, it is important that ch teachers respect every person's emotions and personalities as they try to figure out who they are. The last thing I want to show you is this participatory observation that I did while in a first grade classroom. I did this observation while I worked with reading groups. Since I had to leave early, I only got to two out of the four groups. In those two groups, the teacher put a high-level reader, a medium-level reader, and a low-level reader together. When observing the two groups, I noticed that in the first group, the highest reader showed no egocentrism because she encouraged and helped the low reader whenever she struggled. During the second group, the highest reader was egocentric because he laughed every time the lowest reader couldn't read a word. Between the two groups, the lowest reader in the first group was more comfortable and confident when reading.